Hi everyone and welcome. Today I will be talking about all the books that I plan to read in August. Now this TBR is a little bit tentative because I don't know how much I will be able to read, but also because I have three audiobooks on the list. And audiobooks I'm currently listening to via the library and as most of you know, you do have a waiting list. And even though the three books that I have on the list that I plan to read through the library have no waiting list or I'm next in line, so August shouldn't be a problem, I do have some very high priority books on the list that have a waiting list that through their estimation, I would get to first in line somewhere in September. However, sometimes you get the books sooner. So if it appears that I'm next in line in the middle of August, I will prioritize those books over the three that I now think I will be reading in August. But things can always shift throughout the month. For now, the three audiobooks that I plan to listen to are, first of all, What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Now, this is a book that I don't physically own, but T. Kingfisher is an author that I have loved the works that I have read by her so far. The first one that I read was The Raven and the Reindeer. I loved that one. That was a Snow Queen retelling. And the other one was Nettle and Bone. I really enjoyed that one, but not nearly as much as The Raven and the Reindeer. That was more of a darker original fairy tale. However, the tone was a little bit off for me to make it an all-time favorite. So it was a book that I enjoyed, but not as much as The Raven and the Reindeer. Now, What Moves the Dead is apparently a retelling of an Edgar Allan Poe, book or short story or poem, I don't really know, but this is only four hours long. So it is a novella. I do think that it's more horror or thriller opposed to the fantasy by her that I've read so far. So I don't really know what to expect. I've also heard that most people say it's perfect to read in October. However, I can imagine that the waiting list will be a lot longer then. And I have also heard from some people that they don't think it's very scary. So it could go either way, but I do want to try something new by her. And this was the one that was readily available, so why not give it a try? Another book that is readily available is For the Throne by Hannah Witten. Now, I read the first book of this, I think it's the Wilderwood duology, which was For the Wolf, I think two years ago when it was a new release. And then this one came out last year. So this is the conclusion of that duology. I really liked For the Wolf. It was also a dark, fairy tale retelling, a retelling of not Red Riding Hood, what you would expect, but more Beauty and the Beast retelling. And it was much darker than the original Beauty and the Beast. It had more, well, it's, it says really well here. Some of the reviewers said an eldritch forest monster vibe. And that was exactly what that first one was. Now in this one, we follow the second daughter. So it says that the second daughter is for the wolf. The first daughter is for the throne. And in the first one, we actually followed the second daughter, for the wolf. And in this one, we are going to follow the first daughter who is for the throne. So I do think that it will be a similar vibe, maybe not perfect for summer, but the weather here is more fall-like anyway. So maybe I can give this one a try and then I will finally be able to finish this duology. I like the first book, so why not continue? And I do think that Hannah Witten has written some other books in the meantime that I should check out if I like this one as well. And then the third book that it seems like even though I'm not next in line, I do think that I am second in line. So they think that I will get it halfway through August. And that is Electra by Jennifer Saint. Now, this is, of course, a Greek myth retelling focusing on Electra. I have read a Greek myth retelling by this author before, which was Ariadne. And I really enjoyed that one. This is a shorter book. It's a standalone. It's a myth retelling. I'm sure that I will like it, especially because I do like Jennifer Saint's writing style because I really liked Ariadne. So I think that this will be a great one. With these audiobooks, it always depends a little bit on whether or not I like the narrator. And I'm very happy that for these two, I do have the luxury to switch to the physical books if necessary, if I really don't like the narrator. But if that would happen, I don't think that I can prioritize these this month. So I do hope that I like the narrator because for both Electra, I read Ariadne physically and for The Wolf, I also read physically. So. This will be the first time that I listen to these narrators and I do hope that I will enjoy the way that they are telling the story. But if everything goes according to plan, these are the three audiobooks that I will be listening to in August. Now, for my physical reads, I actually have five books on the TBR for now, which would be too much for me, but hold on, because one is a reread and we all know that I don't do rereads. So at best, I will skim read and I will probably watch a recap somewhere so I know what's going on. And then the other one is the sequel to that one. So of course I am talking about the Winnowing Flame trilogy. The first book, which I will skim read, is The Nine Train. Now The Nine Train was one of my favorite books of 2020. It was in my top 10. I think that that was 
possibly the first video that I ever made on booktube and I loved The Night Train. It was such a mysterious and unique novel where you don't really know what's going on because you do know that there have been A trains in the past but you don't know what these trains actually were. And you are following one of our main characters who is Vintage and she is a kind of archaeologist who goes out in the field, she's trying to find missing clues of the eight past trains to try to determine what these were exactly and if a nine train is coming and would that be problematic. So I really enjoyed that first one but it has been a while and I really need a recap. Now we are reading this trilogy together with some other amazing people on Discord and we are just body reading it. Now I think that for me and two others it is a reread but the other people who are joining are just very fast readers, so I'm sure that they will read The Nine Train pretty quickly, which I will then just read the spoilers and have an idea of what was going on that way. And then we will jump on to The Bitter Twins, which is the sequel. Now, if that doesn't happen in August and it gets pushed over to September, I'm fine with that as well. But just to be sure, I am saving a spot for that one to be read in August. And I'm so looking forward to that and to finally finishing off a series. It is a trilogy. I will be reading this by the end of 2023 together with some other amazing people. And of course, everybody is welcome to join if they want to. But I'm just so happy and I have very high hopes for this trilogy. Now, another book that I am going to read in August and that I'm so excited for because this was my most anticipated release of the year and it came out in July, so last month. And that is The Weaver and the Witch Queen by Genevieve Gornichuk. Now, Genevieve Gornichuk is the author of The Witch's Heart, which was a Norse myth retelling and it followed Arboda, who was one of the wives of Loki and also the mother of his very famous children. Now, I love that book. It's one of my favorite standalones of all time. So, of course, I was looking forward to another installment by this author. Now, this is a standalone. It's not a myth retelling, but it's more historical fantasy. And I think that it's actually, yes, it takes place in the 10th century of Norway and we follow two women. So this is more of a feminist type of fantasy, I think, which I usually very much enjoy. And if I'm not mistaken, Genevieve Gornicek is also somebody who knows a lot about this history because she is very inspired by it. She is somebody who really, really likes to be certain that her books, even though it's fantasy, but it's somewhat historically correct. So I think that one of our two main characters actually wants to become the first queen of Norway. Very much looking forward to this one. And I do think that if I have the time, I will make a reading vlog for this one. I do know that I have to rein myself in sometimes because I get way too enthusiastic. And I have been thinking about making more and more reading vlogs. However, I do need to look out and see that it's feasible for me. But this is one that I've been so much looking forward to that I actually want to have a sort of diary of me going through this book and seeing what I did. Um, besides reading this one, because I think that I will absolutely adore this. So I have extremely high hopes for this one. And then we have, well, it's actually one that I also have very high hopes for. All of these so far are five star predictions, or at the very least, I expect to really enjoy all of them. But this one is Kashil's Avatar by Jacqueline Carey. This is the third and final book in the original Phaedra trilogy in the bigger Kashil's Legacy series. And this is one that I should have finished in, I think, June, because we are reading two books per month. However, I've been out of reading for a while, so I really couldn't face these types of tomes. This is a 750 page book, but these are mass market paperbacks. The font is absolutely tiny and this takes me a very big time. However, I loved Kushiel's Dart. It's one of my favorite books of all time. That really blew me away and I was not anticipating to love it as much as I did. I then read the second book, which is Kushiel's Chosen. Loved this just as much. So I do know that I will love Kushiel's Avatar as well. And even though this will take me a while, I am so happy to finally finish another series that I just know will be an all-time favorite based on the first two. Unless this is highly disappointing, I will really enjoy it. In this one, of course, we follow Phaedra, who is a night courtesan, but on the side, she's also a spy. And with her job as being a prostitute, of course, she is capable of learning about a lot of secrets that other spies might not be capable of learning because she has some very high up clientele as well. Now, that's, of course, what happens in the first book. In the other ones, more happens. There's a lot of political intrigue. There's also quite a bit of smut, to be honest. But I just love these, especially because of Jacqueline Carey's writing style, which is very lush and very elaborate and just beautiful, to be honest. But also because I really like Phaedra as a main character. So, yes, a high contender probably of becoming one of my favorite series of all time. I think that it will be top 10, no matter what, but top three, 
maybe, who knows. So yes, it's safe to say that I have very high hopes for that one as well. And then we have a very tiny book, and that is When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nivo. This is actually a gift that I got from a subscriber a while ago, and I was so excited to get to it, and then I somehow never did. This is the sequel to The Empress of Salt and Fortune, which is also a very small novella, and I absolutely loved it. It was very fairy tale esque It was told as a sort of fairy tale, where you have this chapter and somebody is telling somebody else's story, which is a narrative device that I absolutely adore. And the one who is telling the story asks every time, do you understand yet? And the one who is listening to the story doesn't, so the story continues. And it's such a beautiful message, it's such a beautiful story that I just want to continue. So I think by now, the third one of this novella series has definitely come out, but I think maybe the fourth one even. Now, these are standalones, they are part of the same world, they follow the same characters, but you could read them in any order. So it's not really a big problem that I read the first one a long time ago. It should be fine. It's a very short one. And like I said, I do know that I love Nivo's writing style, so why not continue? So, yes, five physical reads, but like I said, one reread slash skim read slash look up the recap and one very short one. So let's hope that I can get through all of these through August. And if not, there's always September, October, November and December, I suppose. Please let me know what you will be reading in August and if you have something that you're very much looking forward to. I had the feeling that I was saying that about all the books that I have on my TBR, but I guess that's best case scenario, right? Let me know in the comments down below what you're looking forward to. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye!